Film photography is a topic that stirs passions. I'm talking from experience. Some people really care if I should film or not, and they've let me know. In this video, I'm gonna share why I think this is, I'm gonna share my story and experience with film, and why I shoot mostly digital today. Please don't get mad if I say something that you disagree with. This is photography, this is an art, this is subjective, and each of us is supposed to have a different point of view. Film photographers get to shoot film either because that's what they've been doing forever or because digital wasn't working out for them and they are trying something new. In my case, it was the latter. After a few years uh, shooting digital, I felt like I had hit a plateau in my career and I couldn't figure out how to get out of there. I almost quit as I started to think that maybe photography wasn't for me after all. That was, of course, until this camera came to my life and changed all of that. Seeing a photographer handling a film camera can be mesmerizing. It's a long and complicated process. There are just so many things that could go wrong with the shot. It requires skills and makes photography a challenge. We human beings like a good challenge. We don't like it when things are too easy nor when they are too hard, but we love them when they are just right. Digital photography has robbed from many photographers the joy of a good challenge. It's just too easy. Shooting film feels better because it's harder, and that's all you might need to start a chain reaction. If you get enjoyment from using your camera, you're gonna get out more often, and because you get out more often, you're gonna be making better images. It is that simple. This camera did that for me. For over a year, this was my main camera, my stills camera. I made all my images with this one. It forced me to adopt an approach to photography that was completely different to the one I was used to, and that novelty sparked something within me. I fell in love with the uh, process. It added an extra layer of complexity to my photography, but I loved the struggle I made making an image more rewarding. It also helped me getting my work out there to stand out among other photographers, because a good challenge is always a good selling point. Consider this, uh, getting to the top of a mountain is not the point, because one could get there by helicopter. The point is the climb. We love to see others facing a challenge, overcoming the difficulties and triumph. When you shoot film, the odds are against you. The heavier and more primitive the camera, the better. The fewer shots we have available to us, the better. The more adjustments we have to make to the camera in a rush while trying to photograph a fleeting scene, the better. Film can create very good behind the scene stories. The uh, final image is still the goal, but it's more complete because of the journey that we had to take to get there, the obstacles that we had to overcome, what we've learned and how it's changed us. All of that just makes the original work even better. This, of course, also applies when we are trying to sell that work to ourselves. It took so much effort, it took so much time to make those images that they feel more rewarding. Over time, I started to put myself on more and more challenging situations, from longer and harder hikes to shooting in really bad weather. It was in those situations when film started to feel a little bit frustrating. It didn't happen that often, but here and there I could miss some shots. And it really stinks when you invest so much time and money, when you do everything right or when you just happen to be lucky to be at the right place at the right moment and you still fail to make the image because the camera got in the way. This is a... Uh... 106 rolls of HP5 
Ooh. So yeah, first of all, you're welcome, Ilford. I can't forget about developing film either. I was doing it myself to save some money, but it was costing me a lot in time. I spent so many hours handling stinky and toxic chemicals in the bathroom here at home or at random motels in the middle of nowhere across the country. Sometimes I'd even mess up the process jamming film or using the wrong temperatures or the wrong ratio developer to water and I could lose entire rolls. One thing is for sure, film made me feel busy all the time. There was always something to do. I always had roles to develop or roles to scan. It was a lot of work, but I wasn't necessarily seeing any improvement in my photography. So this is when I started to think twice about the rewarding part of the whole process. So little by little, I started to shoot digital again. This time I treated the digital camera as if it were a film camera, but with the added benefits of portability, flexibility, and simplicity. And after a little bit of experimentation, I was able to create results that were very similar to those that I was creating or getting from my film camera. It might sound silly, but it was then when I finally realized that it wasn't the camera who was making the images. It was me. It was the vision that I had. Sure, the Bronica had triggered the change, but at that point I understood that I could do that kind of work with any camera. It didn't have to be the Bronica. It didn't even have to be film. The other realization I had was that there are more ways to make your photography challenging and rewarding other than camera gear. I was putting myself in new situations, facing new subjects, discovering new locations, fighting new challenges. I actually wanted my camera to be as small, light and easy to use as possible. The challenge was now the hike, the snow, the storm, the fog, the sunset that is quickly fading away, the bird that just decided to land in front of you. I finally realized what I wanted to get from photography, no matter if it was film or digital. I wanted photography to make me feel alive. Today, most of my images are made on digital cameras, but I still have a great appreciation for film and all that it has given me over time. I'm not going to tell you what you should or should not do. No one can. You have to think through your choices yourself. And most importantly, always ask yourself why. Why are you doing it? Instead of thinking what kind of work you could do with a specific camera or medium, do it the other way around. Ask yourself what kind of work you want to do first and then get the tools that will help you accomplish just that. That could be a film camera, it could be a digital camera, or even better, a combination of both. Always, always keep your work at center stage. Do not let camera gear steal the show. I know that some of you will agree with me, plenty of you will disagree with me as well, so just feel free to leave a comment down below and let's keep this conversation going. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.